Reports here at topvelocity.net. Going to do a pitch analysis here at Brian. We're going to pair them up with Cody Hall. Take them both into their leg lifts. Okay, you can see Cody more inside, drive leg. Brian, a little too balanced up here. You've got to make sure that you're in a position to start initially getting your momentum, going your body going towards the target. So when we get too balanced over our back leg, it's in a hard position to start building, getting that fall going. So what we do is we typically try to either uh, over push the hip out or swing the leg, and then it's going to disrupt timing of the kinetic chain. So try to keep this where you actually want to be off balance. You want to be inside that drive leg. So when you lift, you already have that momentum pulling you towards the target. And then you can see when you, when that lift leg is ready to get in front of your, go in front of your front hip, you've got some momentum moving you forward. You can see, just looking at your force vector here being so vertical, there's not a lot of forward momentum at this point. It's just a lot of downward movement coming out of leg lift. So now you're in a tough position to where the only way you're going to be able to really accelerate, keep your momentum building, is you're going to have to either let this lift leg take over and get out front, pull you from, you know, pull you from the rubber. Or you're going to have to try to push this knee down early to push force moving forward. Or you might even shut your lower half all together and want to just go to your glove side and start throwing. But so you can see Cody is in a better position here to keep riding that momentum that he has built up out of his leg lift and and stay loaded here on the drive leg as he counter rotates the trunk counter rotates the hips you can see you're not count as counter rotated which really gives the trunk time to coil and, and really gives it more range of motion and unloading so when cody's front foot wants to get out and open back leg is now in a position to accelerate that through extension and drive in the front foot and then the trunk is in a position to ride that and stay closed. So you can see you're using, at this position with your lack of momentum, you're using both the glove side and front leg to pull you from the rubber as your arm cocks early into front foot. And then what you have is a difference of a more open front foot position, which you can see Cody's in a more closed front foot position. You, you're tucking earlier than Cody, and your front foot is more sideways, I'd say, than Cody. Cody has a little bit more hip uh, rotation or hips driving at that point, and he's doing that at a more closed position. So a lot of where your back leg is is because your front foot flew farther open to pull that around. Cody has a closed front leg position, closed shoulder position, and a little bit more open hip position than you. So it just shows that he has more power through that backside, back leg, and because of that more hip to shoulder separation. Okay. So he keeps stabilizing as the back hip drives open, and you can see it's opening here. And the upper body is lagging behind that movement in rotation. And as it catches up, front leg is staying stable and that allows his trunk to push out. I mean, ideally, if he could extend his front leg here, it would be even more support of energy. And, and all that energy, as that trunk opens, really carries forward. We can see with you, as you land and as your back hip gets through, your glove is, is tucking with it. So what it's doing is it's causing back shoulder, back hip to move together. So now we're powering more in rotation than keeping separated, which is going to power more in that back hip through a linear drive. So when your tr trunk opens up, there's not a lot of linear force at this point. There's a lot of rotational, so your arm, uh, so you're releasing a more vertical position. Now your front leg actually got a little bit more active than Cody's. But if we looked at your forward trunk positions, you know, Cody would be carrying more forward trunk. So about 10 degrees more forward trunk, and you have a, you're extending your front leg. If he you extended his front leg, he'd have even more. So 
when when you got to front foot strike, as you can see, your front foot is flying across your body. Glove side is tucking and pulling. Arm is even dragging. So we're getting to the point where we're getting into some hyperangulation. You can see with Cody, because his glove side is not pulling, you don't see an aggressive glove side. The arm quick sinks up with the shoulder. Yours drags a little bit because you're pulling in more rotation. Therefore, you finish in a more vertical trunk. He keeps carrying more forward power, more forward momentum. And, you know, what you're even going to see, too, the benefits of staying closed, riding backside, driving backside more. You're going to probably see a longer stride from Cody than you. Uh, he's going to have more of an extension uh, release from lease from front foot than you. And potentially he should have more energy more velocity than you at this point. This pitch of his was 96. He's been up to, you know, 100 miles an hour. So I think this gives you a good basis to really learn how to start your momentum earlier, uh, ride that through your backside, and don't, we, because of that, you should get more energy out of your backside, back leg drive, so you're less swinging front leg open, pulling glove side early, pulling glove side too aggressive, to force too much rotation in your trunk and riding that backside, riding that linear energy down the mountain, getting more forward momentum in the trunk.